So I always said that I love the opportunity to ride my electric unicycle somewhere far away and be able to explore a whole new city. And this episode, I'm going to get the chance to do it. This week, we traveled to Taiwan and I finally get some real scoot time on the Gogoro S2. Want to know why it's often called the Tesla of the scooter world? Plus, I attempt to negotiate the crazy traffic of Taipei and learn how to park Taiwanese style. That and riding the Kingsong 18XL, group rides and more. Are you ready for a travel special? Strap in for a trip around the world. Roll the intro. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and stay tuned to the end for a preview of what's coming up next. I have a strange problem. I can't seem to have relaxing vacation. Other people go down to the Caribbean, have a nice drink on the beach while they relax. But a few years ago when my friends invite me to do the very same thing, I thought that it would be a great idea for me to figure out how to pack and fly with my 14 foot long floating kayak, assemble it on the beach, and then spend the next two days attempting to make it past the breakwater and the waves seemed like a good idea at the time. And last year, I managed to test out the electric scooter sharing program that they have and also the GoGoRo battery swap system. And of course, thanks to the help of Ryder, I got to try out the Z6. And I'm hoping that the trip to Taiwan this year will be just as eventful. I am also traveling under the scare of the coronavirus epidemic. I actually really like taking the air train. There's something really magical about taking the subway, which I'm intimately familiar with, transfer to another train, and then somehow transfer onto an airplane. I always had a thing for airport. There's just something exciting. You're either traveling yourself, or you're meeting up with someone who's arriving from some faraway land. long flights. So the next thing I have to do is to get on the rapid transit to Taipei City. There's a train station I think right downstairs that's connected to the subway system. It's pretty convenient. That's the MRT car. This work on the subway as well as the airport shuttle. Now I just have to check to see whether or not I actually have money in this thing. Like many modern cities in Asia, Taipei, the capital city of Taiwan, has an excellent metro system that links directly to their international airport. And 23 hours later, I finally arrive at Rayfan. The small town Kelly is from, which is in a spectacular valley on the eastern shore of Taiwan where the mountain meets the Pacific Ocean. But we are way off topic. Electric personal transport, that's right. Now last year I had a good time riding the electric Wemo scooter around Taipei. But the one I really wanted to try was this, the Gogoro S2. An electric moped with a 60 miles per hour top speed and a 60 miles range. It is powered by a 7600 watt liquid cool motor with a final chain drive and has dual suspension both front and back. Gogoro launched their first electric scooter back in 2015 and it's currently on Gen 3 of their product lineup. And I have to say that this is just a beautifully designed, really well thought out and incredibly refined product. You get a proximity key fob just as you would with a car. It says, hello. and then it's ready to go. And although Taiwan can no longer claim to be the scooter capital of the world when it comes to density and numbers, they are certainly ubiquitous and because of this, I think the Taiwanese has a somewhat different relationship with the town and city they live in. So walking around Taiwan, one of the things you notice is that the sidewalk is often blocked. Because I think people actually don't walk around very much. They ride it to the store, they ride it to work, they basically ride it 
to wherever and they leave it right in front of wherever it is they're going. By the way, the density is so high that it is a normal parking practice to shift a whole row of other people's scooters in order to wedge your own in for legal parking spots. And because of the higher income levels here, the Taiwanese can also afford to be very picky about their wheels. Just about every single foreign motorbike companies have their presence here. BMW, Piaggio's, Vespa, Yamaha in addition to several solid local brands like SYN and Kimco that have been producing world class and very popular motorbikes for the past 40 years. So how was Gogoro, a relatively new electric scooter company, able to grab a 16% market share in this incredibly competitive and very popular segment? Surprisingly, the answer lies underneath one of the least exciting part of this electric moped. But the most interesting part of the scooter and part of the reason why it's being called the Tesla of the electric scooter is its batteries. First of all, they're modular and easily removable at about 1300 watt hour each. If you run out, it's just a matter of... So these battery stations are basically scattered throughout Taiwan. It tells you how much percentage of battery you use. And that's all it took, less than a minute. I think it actually works better than a Tesla supercharger. Aside from the headline feature of a network of swappable battery stations, the electric drivetrain also comes with a slew of less advertised but just as handy features. While on the way to the train station, our taxi cab driver, a 60 year old man, proudly told us about his recent Gogoro purchase. And what attracted him to the Gogoro wasn't its top speed or acceleration, but that it was quiet, easy to maintain, and that it doesn't have a hot exhaust pipe which his wife had accidentally burned her leg on with his last gas scooter. So how well does it ride? Well, really well as a matter of fact. That 7,000 watt motor really give you a nice kick and you can get up to 30 miles per hour in less than 4 seconds. And it's not a crawl going up to that 60 miles per hour top speed. In turbo mode, this thing could be just about any other traditional gas scooter at a line. And cornering also feels stable and predictable exactly when you need when you have curvy mountain roads like this. It is an incredibly refined ride, especially for urban use and speed less than 60 miles an hour. There's really very little you can ask for when it comes to a scooter like this. And as you notice, it also seems too comfortable. Kelly is probably only making a face because I'm making her hold the camera stick, which is quite heavy. So. All of this comes in at $3,200, which is actually not that much more than my Gotway Monster. And this thing has two wheels, a seat that fits up to two people and all of that stuff. Now there is a subscription service associated with the battery swap station. And I suspect that that likely subsidized the cost of this electric scooter somewhat, but it is just such a convenient way of dealing with range anxiety and I do have to say that I'm quite surprised that no other electric vehicle company had came up with something similar to what Gogoro did here in Taiwan. It is just such a compelling way of dealing with the common problem of the amount of time it takes for you to charge a battery pack. Ending a move similar to what Japanese company did with cell phone during the 90s, remember how they used to have the coolest phone and never sell them outside of Japan? Gogoro scooters are also not available outside of Taiwan. This may have to do with the fact that for their business model to work, they not only have to overcome the regulatory hurdle of getting their scooter approved for road use in whatever country they want to market, they also need to build up a network of battery exchange stations, and that is a pretty pretty big cost and commitment and will likely only make sense when there is enough demand for scooters and as we all know Americans don't really ride scooters.
Except for the Revel scooter, that is, which is a scooter share service that has been operating here in Brooklyn. They are so successful, as a matter of fact, that they recently got $27 million in funding and are expanding to Washington, D.C. If you're regular to my channel and are wondering how the scooters had anything to do with our beloved electric unicycle, well, remember how I've been harping all along about wanting to see some modular and removable battery options for our wheel? The same solution in a different form factor, that is, will work just as well for electric unicycle and the smaller electric push scooter popularized through scooter share services, and it would also have the added advantage of solving the piles of scooter on the street corner problem, since you would own and be responsible for the vehicle and only share the battery. It also may bring your personal transport with you on flights and for travel way easier. With the rise of the electrical microtransport segment, there have been much speculation as to what the roads and city of the future should look like to best leverage these novel modes of transport, and I think Taiwan, with its ubiquitous scooter culture, is an excellent place to look to for some inspiration, and despite the fact that the infrastructure looked very similar to our own, the regulations and how people here actually utilize it are actually quite different. That, and yes, Yes, I did take advantage of these excellent, beautiful, smooth road with the Kingston 18 XL I borrowed and finally had the opportunity to explore a brand new city like I have always wanted to. But unfortunately, look at the time, we're way over our regularly scheduled time wasting limit of 10 minutes. But I promise to pick up that and more next week. If you're new to my channel, I mostly talk about electric unicycle and other electric rideable. And if you're interested in getting in on the action and enjoy what you just watched, like and subscribe to my channel and help spread the word. Next week, my Taiwan adventure continues! I ride the 18XL in the streets of Taipei, meet up with some local rider, and travel to the southern city of Tainan and get some beach time on the Gogoro!